Welcome to another Daily Dose of Drupal, Drupal goers, and today we are going to talk about the Entity Reference Module. This is episode number seven, and this is brought to you by CodeKarate.com, and we'll get right into it today. Uh, the Entity Reference Module, you may be familiar with Node Reference or User Reference if you have used Drupal 6 in the past, and this is, it's, it's fairly similar. But what it's going to allow us to do is reference different entities within our, I guess, within other entities, of course. So if we're creating a new node, we can reference other nodes or perhaps a user or a group if we're using organic groups. And we'll go ahead and get started by downloading the entity reference module. So I am in a website right now, test.codecrowdy.com. I'm going to download the entity reference module and you can see it contains two modules entity reference behavior example and entity reference we're not going to worry about the example we're just going to enable the entity reference module it also requires entity so we can go ahead and tell Drush to download the entity module as well so now it's going to enable the entity and the entity reference module. So if you hop over to our site, we go into our modules page, you'll see that we have the entity reference module and the entity API module as well. So now that we have that going, we're going to build off our example from yesterday a little bit, which we have a content type called Doctor Appointment. And in here, we're going to go ahead and add a new content type. And we're going to call this, um, we're just going to call it Room. And this will be a place where we can store different rooms for appointments. And we're going to keep it real simple and just get rid of the body field on the room content type. So it's just a title. Make it really easy. We'll add a, a room. Call it Room 101. We'll go ahead and add one more. Call it Room 102. So now we have a few room content types few room nodes I guess you could say and we'll go into structure back to content types into our doctor appointment and we'll go manage fields and we are going to add a new field you'll see there's now one call or a field type called entity reference we're going to reference a room for an appointment we could do an autocomplete a select list or a checkbox we're going to do a select list in this case scroll down to the bottom and hit save and you get to select the target type. This is the entity you're going to be referencing. So if we wanted to reference a user, we could select users. So we could reference specific users and assign them to this specific appointment. And we'll do that here in a second. But for this case, we'll go ahead and use node. And the node we're going to be referencing is a room, the room nodes. You could use uh, the simple option, which is where you can select this down below. You could also use views. Looks like there's a error there. But you could also use views to select different entities based on the different types that you want and then use that to reference specific nodes in this case. So we're not going to sort it. We'll go ahead and save it from there. And see if that works okay so now when I go into add content and I go to doctor appointment something happened here we'll go ahead and debug this one quick if we go back into our content type we go to doctor appointment manage fields we have our room here I'm gonna add this in appointment details and save it so it's listed under there let's go ahead and edit this Make sure we select room as our target bundle. Hit save. Now everything should be working. 
go ahead and add content now, doctor appointment. If we go into appointment details, you notice at the bottom we can select which room we want. So we can select when this appointment's going to be. Say it's an hour long, it's going to be on the 17th in the evening. And you could use a module such as auto node titles to get rid of this title field, which in some cases you're going to need to do. But in this case, we'll leave it, leave the title in there. Go ahead and select it a room, we save it. And now we have a simple appointment for first name, here's the date of the appointment, and here's the room that it's assigned to. So pretty simple. We'll go ahead and also reference a specific user. So we will create a quick user. I only have one user right now. We're going to say this is uh, Dr. One. We'll go ahead and do that. Give them a, just a password that they can then change. And we could add a new role for specific doctors if we wanted to allow doctors to see different things. But just to keep it simple, we could notify the user if we wanted to. I'm not going to. I will create it. And you can see there's now two users on this site. If I go back into structure, into content types, and back to the doctor appointment, I will then add another entity reference field for doctor. And we will add a select list on this one as well. You know what? We'll actually do an autocomplete just to show the different options. We're going to select that it's going to be a user, and it will be a simple. Go ahead and save that. keep everything else the same. We can obviously change some of these values, add help text, change the size of the text field, or set a default doctor. But we'll go ahead and keep that the same. Save it, and now the next time... Well, first of all, we'll go ahead and drop this in there, rearrange this a little bit. Save that. Now I'll go ahead and create one more doctor appointment. Just call this another test. If we go into appointment details now, you have the start date. Say this is on the 19th at 8.30 to 9.30. It's going to be in room 102. And the doctor should be working here. Okay, it took a little bit longer than expected, but it's Dr. One. So if we go ahead and save this, now you can see room 102, Dr. One. And you'll notice that as when you're adding that, it puts this little two here, and that two is actually the user ID of that specific user. So in this case this is the doctor one is user ID two. If you're you would come over here, you hover over the edit, you can see that down on the bottom over in here. It's user slash two. So that's the user ID of that user. Because you sometimes don't want them to or you don't want certain people or you just want to hide the user ID to make it clean so you don't have people asking or clients asking, you can switch that over to a select list depending on how many users, of course, you have on your site. If you have a lot of users, it might become a little unwieldy. But we'll go ahead and save that just to show what it would look like as a select list. Pretty basic. Just about, about as simple as it gets. Pretty simple module, but it allows you to do 
an incredibly large amount of things, especially when you're building out more than just basic websites and you're really building out applications with Drupal, such as uh, a booking system for appointments like this, or maybe it's a bug tracking system and you need to assign a bug report to specific users. There's just a whole bunch of use cases for it. And tomorrow we'll go over a different topic. Go ahead and follow me on Twitter at smthomas3 and sign up for the Code Karate newsletter to receive, the, I guess, the ability to see longer videos in the future that I plan on posting. Uh, until next time, this is the Daily Dose of Drupal. See you later.